Hello, this is Gary at Jack Raven Brushcraft. Thank you for watching our video. Uh, this week I'm going to talk a little bit about rose hips. So today I've ventured out into the field, it's gloriously sunny in fact, uh, and the reason is I've come out into the field is because I just wanted to kind of look around the, the hedgerow, see what's going on. Uh, so you may uh, recognise this particular spot in fact, I was here just a few weeks ago talking about slows. This week I want to turn my attention however to rose hips. So rose hips are the fruit that grow on uh, a wild rose, sometimes referred to as dog rose. Now, the use of the word dog here, it, it doesn't particularly have anything to do with um, with dogs per se. Um, it comes from, um, it has a Germanic root where dog is meaning common. So, it, it, so it's a common rose in the same way we get dog violet, so it's a, a, um, a common violet. The fruit itself, I've got one here. You do have to be a little cautious, of course, because they are on roses, and roses do have thorns. Well, here's the fruit. Uh, so it's uh, they're they're red, um, sometimes an orangey red. For me, they're definitely rugby ball shaped. So quite quite a lot of our berries are more spherical; they're round. But this one is um, certainly kind of stretched out a little bit more in that in the way a rugby ball might be. So they're pretty straightforward to recognise and um, this is a good thing. They are uh, nutritious so they contain lots of vitamin C. So there is more vitamin C in rose hips than there is in, an, in oranges, gram for gram. Um, so in fact during the Second World War people were encouraged to kind of scour the hedgerows and collect up um, rose hips so that, that they could be then sort of rationed out to people to make sure that they were at least getting some vitamin C. I quite like eating them raw, I, like, I quite like the taste of them, however you do need to be a little cautious if it comes to eating them raw. So inside these they have seeds and those seeds have tiny little hairs on them and, and in fact country kids used to get the seeds and drop it down each other's backs and use it almost as itching powder. And so if you eat those seeds there and with those little hairs on it, essentially the same thing's going to happen in your stomach. So it's just going to itch like crazy. So it's important that you try to remove the, that you do remove the seeds before you eat them, if you're going to go with them, eating them raw. And like I say, I do quite like them. Other things you can do with them, uh, so aside from eating them raw or using them as itching powder in fact, um, we often make a jelly from these and um, rosehip jelly is really tasty, it works particularly well with um, savoury, so with cold meat and cheese, that kind of thing, so you know, cracker um, with, with some nice cheese and a bit of rosehip jelly on the top is delicious. Um, Nicola, often, Nicola often makes a rosehip uh, syrup and again that, that's also really tasty. Um, or you could just go with uh, a rosehip tea on it um, and again it, it's lovely and tasty um, and so all of these things are certainly worth having a go at. If you look on our blog you will find recipes for those things. Here in Kent they are uh, just on the verge of being ready, uh, ripening off and being good to go. So if you get the opportunity go out and uh, collect them up and, and give them a try because uh, yeah they're really really tasty. I'm hoping to get some more content out on our blog um, and YouTube channel next week so if you haven't yet subscribed then please do so uh, just to ensure that you don't miss out on anything. Uh, in the meantime take care, stay safe. <laughs>